All right, what's going on guys? So moving on with our Adobe Premiere Pro Master Class and the video editing or overall editing section of the Premiere Pro Master Class. Next up, we're gonna be taking a brief dive into all of your basic tools and all of your basic and most important shortcuts. So without further ado, we're gonna jump into the tools first and then cover all of the most important shortcuts that I feel as though you guys should know about in Premiere Pro. But first off, we're going to start with the all selection tool or the just just the selection tool actually, my bad. And this is just your all purposes tool that I would advise you guys to pretty much be default using. You can click, hold and drag to create a, uh, a highlight box where obviously any clips that you um, go over when in this box are encompassed under that. You could also click on clips to just individually highlight them. Uh, you can hover on the side of clips to actually trim them down like this and overall your all selection tool is is the main tool you would be using when composing, compiling, and overall, you know, uh, shifting around your clips, um, uh, you know, positioning them to beats, overall, just all of your general clip um, movement and clip placement composition overall work is going to be done with that selection tool. Now, the next uh, tool down the list is going to be the track select forward tool. And if you click and hold on this one, you can also get the track select backward tool. I'm gonna just going to start with the track select forward tool just to show you guys an example with this. And I'm actually going to go back to the all selection tool and actually just go ahead and duplicate this clip quickly so I can actually do a better demonstration of the track select forward tool and the track select backward tool. So click on the track select forward tool and essentially it is going to select anything in front of these arrows. So if I click here, only that clip there is in front of these arrows. So only that clip is going to be highlighted. Likewise, if I click back here, both of these clips or part of this one, um, but both of them, at least a bit of it is actually in front of these arrows. So both will be selected. But if I only select here, only that one's in front. So it will be selected. So it's track select forward. Now, if we just learned that, the track select backward tool is essentially the same thing. It's going to select anything that is to the left hand side of those arrows. And, um, you know, if we're right here, it'll be just this clip. If we're here, it'll be just those two clips. So that is a very basic one as well. And actually moving on, we're going to mess with the ripple edit tool. Now the ripple edit tool, hold on, let me just put these two uh, together and throw them here so we can look at them a little bit better. The ripple edit tool is a pretty cool one. It essentially breaks down the process of um, removing a clip and then bringing it over. And you don't have to basically do that. So for example, if I go to the selection tool and trim a clip down, if I were to trim it to here, there's a gap right there. And we could always click that gap and actually just go ahead and delete it so that this would teleport right there. However, this, this um, ripple edit tool essentially does that process that I just showed you there in one movement. So instead of us trimming it down with the red logo, when I hover over here, it pops up with a yellow logo and I'm able to trim that down and it will just do that same motion. So instead of there being a gap there and it not just bringing it all the way to the point where we trimmed it, it will just teleport it back to the point where we trimmed it and save us that whole unnecessary, um, you know, uh, editing method of trimming it to there and then deleting that clip or, you know, dragging it over. And it just does all that for us in one swift movement, which is great by all means. Next up is going to be the razor tool. Very, very self-explanatory. It is the overall cutting and, and uh, you know, how you would actually do an incision or a cut right down the middle of a clip instead of trimming, obviously trimming. You couldn't trim to the middle really, you know what I mean? I guess you can, but it's a little difficult. If you go to the razor tool, you could just go ahead and put a chop right down the middle, splicing that into two individual clips. And likewise, you could create any shape, size, whatever, you know what I mean? It, it, there's no set. Uh, size. Obviously, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of random little cuts here and we could splice the whole thing up using the razor tool, but I'm just going to go ahead and undo all those little splices. Now, moving on to the slip tool. This one is a bit of a weird one, to be honest. I wouldn't advise you using too much. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and zoom in on the screen so you could see a little bit better, but this uh, tool right here actually changes what time of the clip is actually playing here. So for, for, for this clip, note the beginning of this. This guy's kind of gassing with his face like that. If I go to the slip tool and actually click and hold and start dragging, you see those numbers come up, all right? And that is actually changing the time where the clip is at. So now if I, if, if I let that go after doing the change, his face isn't, isn't gassing anymore. 
he's actually being covered in smoke because it changes what time the clip starts at. So you see at the bottom, it starts at 12 right now, and I can keep edging it over to make it start at a different time, but keep the block size that we've actually chopped out. So for me at least, I almost never use this. I really don't use this tool and I never really find the need to. Honestly, if I have really never needed this tool that much in over three years of using this program, I highly doubt you guys will. So I'm really not going to go too much into that tool. I really don't think it's completely necessary and overall, you guys need to, don't need to worry about that. The pen tool, I'm going to go much more extensively into uh, later as well. So I will skip that as well. And the hand tool is essentially your all purposes movement tool for your preview window up here. For example, if I were to go into uh, 150 view, we would be on this hand tool and we could actually maneuver around this preview window <laughs> and reposition that so we see a, a pretty funny face on the screen with this guy right here. And um, it's basically just like a, a, a an, an adjustment movement tool. This is just you uh, moving around your preview window. And finally, the text tool. Let me just fit that. The text tool is your all purposes text tool. You could actually click the text tool, come up here and go ahead and tap that and it will pop up with a graphic layer here and you can actually start typing stuff in there. But by all means, we're gonna be getting to far more extensively into the graphics section of this later in the next section of this particular uh, Adobe Premiere Pro Masterclass. But that right there is a brief run through of the tools available to you within Premiere Pro. And now I'm gonna go over the short cuts. So first off, of course, we have our ins and our out points. It is I to set an endpoint. For example, if I wanted to endpoint on one of these clips up here, I could double click it to open it up go on to this particular dial right here, find where I would want to start it and press I. And that would put an in point. Likewise, I could go to where I wanted to out it and press O and that would be an out point. Also, if I wanted to teleport to that in point without just precisely moving the dial over here, say I was over here and I wanted to save time, I could hold shift and then press I and that would teleport me directly to here. Likewise, if I had an out point um, down here in our sequence, because it doesn't just work up here, we could put an I, um, an in point and an out point there, and then I could press shift I, and it would teleport me here, but I am now selecting this. So if I'm selecting this and press shift I, it will jump to this one. Likewise, I could hold shift and O, and it would jump me to my out point up here, and also down here, if I was to press shift and O, it would teleport me there. Next up, we could actually go ahead and hover over a clip, and hypothetically speaking, if we wanted to copy it, we could press Control c which is copy, and then whichever one of these uh, uh, layers up here had the blue turned on, it, uh, and when we press Control v it will paste it to the lat layer. So if, for example, V3, if I had it up here, and I pressed Control v it would paste to that layer, but if I had V2 on blue and had that off and pressed Control v it would paste to that layer. So that is the copy paste control. And I use that a lot, but you have to keep in mind that you do have to select the layer that you want it to paste to. Okay. Um, next up on the list would be to duplicate, which is very similar to the copy and paste, but it's kind of a little bit uh, more convenient for certain situations to duplicate. You would click a clip, hold alt and drag anywhere. Basically you could drag up, you could click it, hold alt and drag to the side. You could drag uh, down it, if there was a, another video layer below for example up here if I hold it alt and drag down we could duplicate that basically wherever there's another layer if you hold alt and drag to you are duplicating that clip I've just duplicated it like four times there very very cool and very useful to actually do our tools shortcuts it is an extremely similar process, um, and this one kind of makes a lot of sense. But if you guys forget any of these, you can hover over the tool, and it will show you the shortcut in a tiny little bracket on the side. But the most important ones for me are V to actually select the All Selection tool, and by all means, pay attention to here because it's going to teleport to these when I click them. Then it's going to be C to actually get my Razor tool, H to get my Hand tool, T to get my Text tool, and P to get my pen tool. The most important ones for me are V and C. And in terms of C and T and P, all these ones are very basic. C, um, even though it's the razor tool, the way I remember this is cut. So C is the first letter of cut, which is essentially what the razor tool does. T is the first letter of text, or it's the type tool, uh, technically. H is the first letter of hand. P is the first letter of pen. Overall, pretty much all of these have a very basic way of how you would figure them out. 
if you actually forgot the shortcut. But overall, that's been a brief look into the tools and shortcuts available to you within Adobe Premiere Pro.